Welcome back to SnowRunner, y'all, and the truck we're going to be looking at in this video might not be all that familiar if you're not familiar with a lot of trucks kind of outside the U.S. Now, this is the, in well, in-game, the name of the mod is the Isuzu B-Max, but in the real world, it would be the Isuzu D-Max. Now, this, for its first and second generations, shared a platform with the Chevy Colorado, and then the third generation actually shared a platform with the I believe it's called the Mazda BT-50, which both of those, the Isuzu D-Max and the Mazda BT-50, were not available in the U.S. Um, and these are, we're talking about, you know, trucks that are available in markets like Australia, Asia, places like that. So with that being said, while this might not be a directly familiar truck to some of you, I still think it's a really interesting truck. And it's got some really cool overlanding focused upgrades that you can do once you get it into the garage. And like I said before, it is console friendly, minus the badges, which I have an extra badge pack that puts the real world badges on the truck, and that's obviously PC only. So let's go ahead and fire it up, get it in the garage, and see what we can do with this thing. I do like the taillight design as well. The taillights look pretty cool. And the interior, I actually really like as well. I love how there is a fully modeled shifter. Like, you can properly see that it is very obviously a six speed manual. I love that. All right, let's go ahead and take it on into the garage now. And, oh god, okay, I don't know why we almost smashed into the garage door, let's try to not do that again. Alright, so let's see, default engine, powerful engine, and even more powerful engine. I love the, um, I, I love how, like, literally all they describe is, like, modifications make the engine consume more fuel. They don't really mention anything about extra power, they're just like, be warned, your fuel consumption will go up, and I'm like, yes, this, yes, this is a, this is a thing. I love how they didn't even change the description for, like, all the different gearboxes. It's just, like, each gearbox has its unique attributes. And they looked at that as a description for all the gearbox options, and they said, This is sufficient. And you know what? I'm not mad about it. So we're going to start with the off-road gearbox, and then we'll switch over to the highway gearbox a little bit later on. When we go to do things like the bridge jump, for example. Now, suspension-wise, we got stock raised and tuned custom now tuned custom i wonder if it's a little bit more flexy it doesn't really seem all that different in height from raised let's try tuned custom and then we'll see kind of what it's like from there now i definitely want to get it off of these street tires as soon as i can because those will spin and dig and sink about as quickly as you could possibly imagine and let's see, you can throw tire chains on it if you really want to. I think what we're going to do is we're going to use these 39-inch Usuzi off-road wheels. They're essentially modeled after BFG MTs, and they do look pretty good. I like how you can actually see the tread blocks raised off of the top of the tire. Now, let's see. We'll do the extended and powered winch. We've already got an engageable diff lock, and let's see. We'll do a snorkel setup. And let's see, so we got default body, we've got rear supplies, and we've got an off-road canopy. Now, this is a setup that would be very, very common to see in, like, a Aussie off-road scenario, right? And I love, I love these overland boxes. I know that that's not what they call them in Australia. They don't really call them overland boxes. That's what I call them when I see them in the U.S., but they're just not quite as common here. So, rear bumpers-wise, I'm obviously not going to do that because, well, uh, we've kind of uh, removed the need for a rear uh, bumper. So, let's see. Isuzu back badge. Let's see, where is it at? Uh, oh god. Oh, there it is. I see. Isuzu D Max, and then we'll do the badge on the front. Where is the. It says back badge, but like. Uh, well, you know what? I'm not going to worry about badges on the back because we've got that box back there. Let's see. Highlander, and then let's see. It was a. Wait, what? Um. Was released. Oh, oh, okay. I was like, what is the, what is this description? We'll do the off-road bumper setup. Good grief. That's so much more clearance. That is a massive amount of extra clearance. We're going to leave the standard exhaust on it, and we've only got one wheel option. Okay. All right. So let's see what options we have for vehicle colors. Now, it seems as though there are a couple different ways that you can paint the box. Um, you can either paint it like a white slash silvery color, or you can go for a fully blacked out box. I actually kind of like the way it comes as stock. So let's go ahead and throw beans up there on the dash, and then we will do a, I will just do like a pine tree hanging from the mirror, and now we get to take this thing for a drive and see what it's all about. 
I really like how trucks from other markets are, you know, making their way into... They've, they've always been making their way into SnowRunner, but, like, especially on the console mod front, like, this will give people that play SnowRunner that aren't in the U.S., for example, or maybe they're not really as into, like, U.S. market trucks, this will give them a really cool built scout vehicle to drive and a really cool overlanding vehicle to take out in multiplayer with their friends, whether they want to roleplay out a full adventure or they just want to have, like, you know, a trailing session for, like, 10... 10, 15, 20 minutes, whatever the case may be, this is going to be great for that. And did I mention, by the way, that it absolutely rips? It's not, like, so crazy fast that you're going to be like, oh my god, it's, like, insanely over the top all the time, but, like, it is fast enough that it is definitely fun. Let's see what it does. Wow, that was a really good slide. Holy smokes. Uh-oh. Oh. Wow, it was not a fan of that hill. It was not a fan of that hill at all. Let me try this again. Send it. Oh, there we go. Okay, we just needed the right amount of momentum. We did kind of slide over to the edge a little bit. Let me turn the lockers on. See if we can get it to kind of like rotate itself back to that trail. Because there's a rock obstacle up there that I really want to try with this thing. We almost slid back down. We were so freaking close to sliding back down. I'm really glad we didn't though. Because if we slid back down, I was going to be like, no, please. Not that, like, literally anything but sliding all the way back down. All right, y'all know the obstacle that we're going to attempt in this thing. It's kind of the standard rock crawling obstacle that we attempt in most vehicles. However, I think it's going to be interesting with this because this is a, like, this is an independent front suspension vehicle with big tires, but it's also loaded down with gear. So I don't know if that weight is going to help it or hurt it. I'm hoping that it helps us in terms of traction, but we'll have to wait and see. That line choice was awful. Don't do that. Don't take that line that I just took. That is an awful decision, and I would highly advise against it. Come on, back it up. Back it up. Just want to see if I can fix this. Oh, my jeez. All right. Well, that kind of, like, completely spun around from the way I originally intended it to go. A little better. Oh, we're wedged up against the inside of that rock. Now, hold on one moment. If I could just... Here we go. Yes. There we go. The traction on the rocks isn't bad. It's no rock crawler, but it could definitely get down a rocky section of trail if it had to. And it's definitely not as top heavy as you might think it would be. I, I love this thing. This thing is actually performing really, really well. Like right out of the box. Oh, no. Fall back over. Please. Please. It's still running, but, like, I've got no way to get it out of this. And that's where it stalls out. Okay. All right. Rescue truck. Hold on. Yeah, it won't be, like... It won't be that big of a deal to, like, you know, to get it rescued. But I'm just gonna pull it down the hill. Because it's... A, it's right there. And B, I mean, we've got more than enough repair gear to get that thing... Ah. Uh, okay. It wants to flip me over. I don't know why. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on! You're almost over that edge. You're almost over that edge. Almost! There we go. Stabilize it. Done. Done. And repair and refuel. Good to go. See, that wasn't so bad. Now was it? At least, I don't think it was. Do you think it was, Beans? I don't think so. The horn honestly makes sense for what this is because, I mean, it's gonna reuse a lot of, like, car, I say, I'm saying air quotes here, car parts, you know, like, not necessarily parts that were built for a truck, so it makes sense that it would have a very car-like horn. Let's see how it does in some mud. It's doing pretty well in high range through this mud pit, but, like, when the mud gets a little bit deeper, it'll probably start to slow down a good bit. Yeah, we're gonna have to throw the lockers on for this. Not bad. Not actually, you know what? I retract that statement. Really, really good. Really, really, really good. Now that winch is not as long as it should be. Okay, there we go. Well, maybe not. I, okay, I take that back. It's not that it's not as long as it should be. It's it's not as long as I would like it to be. Let me turn this thing around, actually, because I know that going in there, it's going to sink. Because it almost sank in there. 
And I know that if it almost sank in there, it's gonna sink in the middle one. It's absolutely gonna sink in the middle one. And I'm like, back and forth between like, do I take it through there or not? Because I, I kind of know what the outcome's gonna be. Now, let's go through this flex obstacle, because even though it's not like a, you know, a rock crawler or anything like that, I, I think it'll probably do decently well through here. It's kind of wanting to slink around everything. Yeah, it's kind of... You know, I'm curious. I'm gonna do a little on-the-fly suspension swap. Let's try the high suspension. Because with the high suspension, maybe it'll have more flex, maybe it'll have less. I think it's just... Yeah, all it does is sit a little higher in the front. It doesn't actually change the flex at all. So it's actually not that flexy of a vehicle. Now, it's... Yeah, I... Ooh. If you're looking for flex, that's one thing that I would definitely recommend looking for elsewhere. It's not going to be a flexy rig. Not going to be a flexy rig at all. But... I think it's high enough and it's got enough tire, especially on the 39s, that that's not really going to be an issue for most people on most trails. Now, in an area like this, I would recommend going diagonally because you can see you bury the front bumper pretty bad if you try to attack it directly on. Because attacking this directly on is like, it's literally like, oh my god, we're going to bury the bumper immediately. Absolutely just stuff the bumper into the ground. It makes it, it gets it done, it's just a little bit, it's almost like it's just bouncy, you know what I mean? And I know that to a degree, lifted IFS vehicles are gonna be bouncy, but they don't have to be this bouncy, it, even in a real world sense. Ooh, that was some three wheel action right there. Alright, let's get this thing back out onto the main road, and we'll bring our little portable shop back up, swap out to the highway transmission, then we'll make our portable shop go away, and now we're gonna head off to the bridge jump. This is gonna be a time. Oh boy. It's quick! It's, it's definitely not slow. And you know what I actually- Oh no! I wasn't paying attention for like 0.2 seconds. That's what happens when you don't pay attention for like 0.2 seconds. Oh my god, yeah. So, oh jeez. Oh jeez. Oh, oh, steer out of it. Okay, there we go. We're good. We're good. We're fine. We're fine. We're fine. Breathe. I just gotta remember to be in first person view on the way down the ramp. Because if I'm not, ooh, it's gonna be bad. It's gonna be really, really, really bad. Come on, here we go. And, yep, first person view. Full send. Oh, boy. Oh, God. Uh, okay, back into third person and yeet. Oh. That was so well controlled in the air that, like, I'm kind of... I'm kind of shocked that it ended the way it did. Like, this was genuinely so well controlled. Why does it keep saying diff lock only available in low gear? And I opted, I thought I opted for an, on, uh, an offline winch. I guess I didn't. Did I not? Is it? Extended power. Oh. Offline is in a different category. Right, 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 right. Yes, because that totally makes sense. Yes. Solid winch point, please and thank you. All right. Well, this thing did really, really well. I just wish the suspension wasn't as stiff. That's my only gripe with this thing, is that the suspension is just so incredibly stiff. But other than that, I absolutely love this truck. And if you're looking for something like this, definitely give it a go. But if y'all enjoyed this video, make sure to let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, and I will see y'all next time.